The Pokemon world has a number of oddities. Missing no, alchemy, cryogonal being able to learn attract, Spoink having to bounce in order to keep its heart beating. Why, Spoink, why? You are so cute and I just want to hug you, but if I do, you'll die! And Nidoqueen is unable to breed. This is the one we're talking about today, by the way, in case the title and thumbnail didn't give it away. So, why can't Nidoqueen breed? Well, first let's point out why it's so odd. Out of all the Pokémon, the ones that cannot breed make sense. The Pokémon that don't have a sex obviously cannot breed, so they don't, for the most part. It's complicated, but it, it, it's at least not super simple, you know, just bang them together until a baby egg pops out. And other than the sexless ones, the Pokémon in the Undiscovered Egg Group are also unable to breed, but if you go through the list of Pokémon in the Undiscovered Egg Group, Legendary Pokémon, Legendaries, 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 Baby Pokémon. Breeding babies is wrong. Legendaries, holy butts there are a lot of Legendaries, more babies, Legendaries, and Nidoqueen. Nidoqueen? Nido... Nido Queen, Also Nidorina, its previous evolution, and then Cosplay Pikachu, but it's kinda hard to breed while covered in clothes. The reason it's so strange that Nido Queen cannot breed is because the male counterpart, Nido King, still can. Just fine. Just not with Nido Queen. The way breeding works in Pokemon is simple. You have two Pokemon of the opposite sex and of the same egg group, and put them both in a daycare, and eventually the female one will lay an egg, and the new baby is the same species of the female one. For the most part, egg groups make sense. But there are a few oddities, that's a video for another time, but the popular joke is that a Skitty and a Whale Lord are able to breed. Uh, a massive blue whale and a cat. Better hope the whale is the female, because whale dongs can be the size of a car. So if these can breed, and these can breed, and these can breed, why can't Nido King and Nido Queen breed? When breeding was introduced in Generation 2, it was fine that they couldn't breed. People assumed that it was a mistake, something they overlooked, or perhaps it was too complicated to implement for this evolution line with the technology available on the Game Boy. Most Pokémon are still called the same Pokémon despite their sex, while the Nido lines are technically considered different Pokémon depending on them being male or female. But this theory doesn't play out right, because then they would have fixed it by now. Generation 3 introduced Illumise and Volbeat, two more Pokémon that are technically different Pokémon, but are the male and female counterparts to each other. And they can breed just fine. But even today, Nidoqueen is unable to breed at all, while Nidoking can get schwiffy with it all around. It's not like this was intentional, right? Nidoqueen's Pokédex entry mentions her main thing is that she gets a lot stronger while protecting her young, much like real rhino mothers, which the Nido line is somewhat based on. They get very aggressive when protecting their offspring. And fixing this would be super easy too, literally just change the category of egg group Nido Queen is in, and problem solved. You could fix it in less than five minutes. So at this point, by Generation 7, it must be intentional, but why? The common theory seen all over the internet is menopause. But what is menopause? Menopause is when an older woman, usually around the age of 51, stops having menstrual periods. From this point onwards, she cannot become pregnant. This is due to a very complex mixture of hormonal changes, but for the sake of this video, just know it's when a human female becomes unable to have kids again because she is too old. Meanwhile, old men can still have kids as long as they can still get it up, much like Nidoking. But does it happen only in humans? Is it possible for a Pokemon to have it? Well, menopause happens only in three species on Earth. Can you guess what they are? One of them is humans, obviously, but the other two may surprise you. Have you guessed yet? It's humans, killer whales, and pilot whales. Odd. So it does happen in some animals. Some is a massive understatement, but only marine ones. So unless the Nido line of Pokemon are human-like, which they aren't, or are marine animals, which they aren't, then the menopause theory doesn't quite work. Especially since Nidorina, the middle stage, perhaps the young adult or teen equivalent, also cannot breed. Early menopause does happen about 1% of the time around the late 30s, but that's too small of a chance to be considered for this theory. What's interesting though is while the middle and final stages of this line cannot breed, even with Nidoking, its first stage, Nidoran, 
can with Nido King. Or should I say, Pedo King. Maybe the origins of what the line is based on will have a different answer. The Nido lineup get their names from a few different words from Latin languages and Japanese. Pokemon name etymology is strange. I have a huge video about it right here. I recommend it for all Pokemon fans. Shameless plug. Calling out your shameless plugs doesn't make it any less shameless. The Nido part comes from the Japanese word Nidoru, or even just Nido, meaning twice or two times, which could refer to their evolutionary line being split in two. Ran or Ron from the first form comes from Ran as in to run, since they run across fields. But the other possibility, Ran, means orchid in Japanese, as the most common colors for Japanese orchids are purple and blue, and they have these spots, and are poisonous just like the Nidos. Well, poisonous to cats at least. King and Queen is obvious, and Nidorino and Nidorina get their ending suffixes from Latin, meaning masculine and feminine. But you also get Rhino, as in Rhino. The Nido lineup are loosely based on rhinos, having the hard armor plates and the horns, and living in fields and all that. In fact, wait, I, I think I just answered the question. Duh, I just gotta Google something real quick. Alright, obviously. So you know how I mentioned that Nido Queen's Pokedex entries mention them taking care of their young? If it's worthy enough for a Pokedex entry, then it has to be a major thing. But Pokedex entries are often more about the wild Pokémon in their natural habitat, rather than the captured battling ones. So perhaps, much like actual rhinos, they breed just fine in the wild, but in captivity, they have problems. Sumatran, black, white, all kinds of rhinoceroses are notoriously difficult to breed in captivity. Some of them so much so that they are slated for extinction because they are all dead in the wild, and the ones in captivity aren't breeding. Even artificial insemination does not work with them very well, and it's specifically because of the way the female rhinoceros's reproductive organs work. They are shaped extremely irregularly and use a complex concoction of hormones that need to be present for baby making, and these hormones simply do not come out while a rhino is in captivity. Meanwhile, the male rhinos are fine for the most part. It's easy enough for them to get it on wherever and whenever anyone wants it. So, is this truly why Game Freak made Nido Queen unbreedable, or was this just a mistake that they left in? Either way, it's a curious case, one that requires the use of your noggin. See you all next time. And hey, thank you so much for watching this video. I've got some more cool ones right here, and if you want to be extra awesome, then check out the description for some links on how to support this channel, and keep it alive throughout all these YouTube shenanigans. Ugh. <sighs>